Good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral. My name is Randy Hollerith. I'm the Dean of the Cathedral. Thank you for joining us this morning for this brief service of morning prayer. Let us begin. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, help me today to realize that you will be speaking to me through the events of the day, through people, through things, and through creation. Give me ears, eyes, and a heart to perceive you, however veiled your presence may be. Give me insight to see through the exterior of things into the interior truth. Give me your spirit of discernment. O oh Lord, you know how busy I must be this day. If I forget you, do not forget me. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Our collect for this All Saints Day. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Our reading for today, November 1st, All Saints Day, comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a large, loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here ends the lesson. If this lesson sounds familiar to you, we do read it on All Saints Day, but we often read it during a funeral. It's a beautiful passage full of hope and promise and talks about that even after death, God is with us. But if we look at it in a context, what is John saying here? Traditionally, the book of Revelation is considered to be an apocalyptic text that was written to comfort Christians who lived in Asia Minor, specifically around Ephesus, who were being persecuted by the Roman Empire. Rome did not like Christianity. They didn't like any new religions, and they saw it as a threat. As a result, they persecuted Christians. 
trying to erase this strange cult that followed this man named Jesus. As a result, this passage, and quite frankly, the book of Revelation, was intended to be words of comfort for those who have gone through persecution or the great ordeal, as John said, and lost their lives. So on this All Saints Day, we remember the great saints, many of whom went through great ordeals of their own, individuals who gave their lives because of their faith. For example, early church tradition says that both Peter and Paul were executed in Rome. Tradition says their executions were associated with the year 64 and the Emperor Nero when Emperor Nero instigated a gruesome persecution of Christians to redirect blame for the great fire that destroyed the Circus Maximus. Church tradition says Peter was crucified upside down because he felt unworthy to be crucified in a manner similar to Jesus. Paul was beheaded, they say, because he was a Roman citizen and Roman citizens were not crucified. They were given the benefit of beheading. On this All Saints Day, as I think about all the great saints of the church who spent their lives doing the work of Jesus, I am comforted by the fact that even when life takes us through a great ordeal, and life does take us through great ordeals from time to time. But that even when that happens, that God never lets us go. Whether that great ordeal is martyrdom like Peter and Paul, or simply the struggles of this life that confront all of us who try to follow the way of Jesus, I am comforted by the fact that in the end, love wins. In the end, we will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike us nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be our shepherd. And he will guide us, all of us, to the springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Amen. Now would you join with me as we pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you alone know the secrets of our hearts. You alone understand the burdens we carry and the pain that we bear. As we make our way through this life, we need your healing grace. Give us not only those things that we ask for, but more importantly, dear Lord, give us those good things that we need. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. On this morning, we lift up to you all those who are on our hearts and minds today. I pray for all those who lost their lives in Maine from the tragic shooting, for the people who love them and who are struggling with such terrible loss. I pray for the people of Israel, for all those families who have lost someone they love, for those who are held captive. 
I pray for Palestinians living in Gaza and the West Bank. I pray for all Christians, Muslims and Jews, that God's peace will be with them and that we will find peace and justice in the Holy Land. I pray for the people of Ukraine and an end to war. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always.